to everyone out there in the KW community. Um, we're really glad you have come along again today to watch Asian Dumplings with Jenny Lamb. Uh, I was lucky enough to go to uh, this workshop earlier on in the year for Chinese New Year and we have pretty much made Asian Dumplings since then. Um, it's really fun to do with the family so, um, and we, we've made it part of our family ritual. So we love making them. So um, hi to my boys at home and um, enjoy the show. Welcome to Jenny Lamb from Bun Me. If you've been there, it's amazing. And she's going to show you how to make dumplings now. So I'll see you soon. Hey, guys. Uh, thank you for tuning. So uh, let's get started. I'm sure you guys came here for dumplings. Uh, same with Joy. Uh, this is a weekly recipe for me. I make many variations of dumplings. And today I'm going to be doing uh, the simplest one, which is the boiled pork and ginger dumplings. In saying that, if you guys have any questions about fillings, about different types of doughs, uh, feel free to ask throughout or also at the very end. Uh, when I run these cooking classes, I love to give handy tips about uh, just food and cooking in general. Uh, once again, if you have any questions to do with Asian cuisine uh, or the dumplings, feel free to ask, okay? All right, uh, now, as I'm going through the class, guys, I'm not gonna mention measurements because uh, if you click the link for the recipe, all the measurements are on there. So uh, don't get so caught up when I'm just adding things to the bowl. Um, it, it's just how I work, okay? All right, so you got your plain flour there. We're going to add a touch of salt. Um, this one isn't a gluten-free wrapper, but it's very easy to substitute uh, all-purpose flour for things like rice flour, potato starch, or tapioca as well. So if you are interested in a gluten-free wrapper, just um, pop it in the comments or ask a question, and um, we can always send that to you later. We're going to create a little bit of a well in the center there, and you're going to add your water and your eggs, okay? So you've got uh, one egg and one egg yolk, along with 70 ml of water there. In it goes, and then just going to put the flour over the eggs, or over the liquid I should say, okay? We're going to bring this together into a dough. And you know before I started making dumplings, you would never think that you can make dumplings from scratch, including your own pastry and your own wrappers, all within an hour. So we're going to show that to you uh, guys today. So by the end of this session, you're going to see that we made our own filling, our own dressing, and also our own fresh wrappers as well. It's so satisfying when you actually make your own wrappers. You can really taste the difference. The bite and the chewiness on the dumpling wrapper is just amazing. Okay. So, all in, guys. Now, depending on which eggs you use, sometimes you might find, like it's happened to me now, if the eggs are a little bit smaller, you might be missing a little bit of moisture. So my uh, dough is actually looking a little bit dry. So I'm just going to turn around for a second. Don't go away. I'm just going to add a little bit more water. And I think that's a great thing about learning the fundamentals of a recipe is that once you know how it works, you can kind of fix it yourself or troubleshoot it if it's not going the way you want it to. All right. Yeah, so I, I literally just added about maybe another couple tablespoons of water there. So I want to take this out of the bowl now, guys, just so you can see. And you can see there it's pretty soft, okay? Once you start working on the bench as well, don't worry about all the lumps that you see on the hand. They'll all come together. So we're going to move the bowl. You can tip everything out onto the bench, actually, guys. Don't waste anything. Because you'll find that when you start kneading, it'll all come together anyway. So here's a bit of a trick. You'll notice that the recipe mentions 150 uh, grams of flour to start and then 150 grams worth for dusting. So at this point, I know a lot of people at home would go and wash their hands. I know I used to do that. The best thing to do is actually just to rub some more flour between your hands and to get all the product off. That way you actually get the right quantity and you're not wasting anything as well. Um, I also added egg uh, to this recipe purely because of resting time and it's also for silkiness uh, so this is actually a wonton wrapper that we're making today a wonton dumpling I should say and you can definitely the traditional ones are just flour and water uh, but I find with the egg it just softens the dough so the resting time is a lot less so if you're in a hurry definitely egg all right guys so we're just gonna knead this dough now it generally takes about 10 minutes, so it's not too long. So if you're like me, I always cook to music. Uh, 10 minutes, 
three of your favourite songs and your day will be good to go. What's your favourite music at the moment, Jenny? Favourite music? I'm, I'm, I'm rediscovering Amy Winehouse. Oh, yeah. A bit of Amy Winehouse, a bit of John Mayer, some easy listening. This is a good workout as well, all right, guys? I know a lot of gyms are closed, or all gyms. <laughs> if you're not lucky enough to have your own at home, it's a good little workout. This is where I would get the kids involved as well. You know, there's no knives, there's nothing sharp, so if you want to start teaching them how to cook in a safe environment, it's probably the best way to go. All right, we need a little bit more flour. Okay. The, what you're looking for, guys, is a really uh, smooth dough. So you'll notice that I'm using a lot of my palms. Can the audience see that? Can they see my bench? Yeah. Okay. I still think I'd like that a little bit softer than where it is. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of water. All right, guys. Okay. I think those eggs were 600 grams rather than 700 grams. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's always a combination for me, a combination of rice flour, tapioca starch, and lately um, potato starch. That's been working quite well. It's just about getting the ratio right. And someone else is just asking on Instagram, can you use a machine to make the dough? A hundred percent. So um, I have a KitchenAid at home. They're fantastic. Just use your uh, dough hook, guys. And um, everything that you just saw me put in the bowl, just put it straight into your KitchenAid with the dough hook, let it run. And then when you're ready to even, if you've got the uh, pasta attachment, you can even use that to roll out the, um, the pastry rather than a rolling pin. All right, we're almost... I think we've had a couple of people tune in late. Can you let them know what you're making again? Yeah, so we're making some pork and ginger wonton dumplings today. And we're just gonna boil these ones. So when you're kneading, guys, just make sure that you're always using your palm. Push it away from you and then fold it back over. Is there some cling film here, Joe? Yeah. All right. It was really cold outside, so I decided to wear a knit. I'm regretting it now that I'm getting a workout. <laughs> All right. That dough is feeling really nice, guys. Here we go. Awesome. Almost ready. I'm going to do that. Is that the best place for you? Yes, thank you. What this process also does, guys, the, the kneading, is it actually works the gluten. So that way, that's that really nice texture. The longer you do this, the nicer your texture of that dumpling will be. It gives it a bit of bite and a bit of chew. All right. So 10 minutes, all right guys, three songs. I think we're almost there. I don't think it's been quite 10 minutes, but. <laughs> as long as it's all nice and smooth. And what I do guys, all the creases, just tuck them underneath, okay? Jenny, when you use the pasta machine, do you know what number you go to? This lady goes from naught to nine. Deb, I think her name is. Yep. Do you know how thin you need to get it? It's nice when it's, um, I think a little bit thinner, like a lasagna sheet. Yes. A little bit thinner than that. You're probably looking at about one millimeter. So everyone's pa um, pasta attachment or machine is a little bit different. But I start on the biggest, and then I just slowly run it until it's the thinnest one that it can go to. It just depends. Like if I'm making pot stickers, which is pan fried, um, I like it a little bit thicker, so maybe about two millimeters. And then if I'm making it for a soup, like a wonton soup, I go to the thinnest one possible. All right, guys. So there's my dough. All right. So tuck all the creases underneath. We're now going to just put some cling film over it, just to rest it. And you just rest it on your bench at room temp. Now, if everyone can see, so at the moment, when you press your dough, it bounces back quite a lot. By us resting it, it will soften the dough and let the gluten rest, so it will be a lot softer when you touch it. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Now, whilst that's resting, this is where you make up all your time. We're gonna make our filling while we wait for the dough to rest, okay? So give the bench a bit of a clean down. To 
make the filling, guys, we're going to get a new bowl. Just a medium-sized bowl there. So I've got about 300 grams of uh, pork mince here. Uh, the recipe is 150, and that will make the amount that you guys have there. Do I want to mix this all? Yeah. We're going to go half, guys. So I'll follow that recipe that you guys have. So I believe it's 150 grams of pork mince. Um, and by all means, some people don't eat pork. Uh, you can use any protein that you like. You can use chicken, you can use pork, you can do a seafood one uh, with prawns. The main component is uh, making sure there's a good amount of fat. So um, this is actually proper dumpling uh, pork mince that I get from my butchers. Uh, and you just ask them. You just go, can I get one that's a ratio about maybe 70% 70, uh, 70 uh, lean meat to 30% fat? That way your dumplings have a lot of moisture and flavour to them as well. Um, and don't be, I think some people are like, oh, but you know, I don't want too much fat, I'm trying to keep healthy. Completely understand that. Um, you, then the, what you can do is you're really against the, adding the extra level of fat, is you can add vegetables. So today, guys, we're going to add a bit of bok choy as well. And what the bok choy will do is it adds uh, moisture because it adds a bit of uh, sweetness and also some water content. And that will help to actually keep your dumplings nice and moist as well. Okay? All right, so into your pork mince, we're going to now add all our condiments. So we've got some soy sauce here. Go in with some soy. We've got some Shaoxing rice wine. Okay, so this is uh, Asian cooking wine, basically. It's got a really beautiful uh, aroma and fragrance. And in recipes where you do need to add a bit of extra moisture or flavor, um, I just find that it makes more sense to add the cooking wine as opposed to just water. And it's so cheap. Like this is literally like $2. This is the best brand, okay guys? Uh, my cookbook comes out later on this year, finally. It's been a long time project. Uh, but there's a whole page dedicated to my favorite brand staples. Um, there's, I suppose the best way to think about it is that there's not one type of olive oil. You know, there's many differences uh, with different brands. And same when it comes to Asian condiments. Like one soy sauce, to another soy sauce is very different as well. Okay, so we've had the soy sauce, the Shaoxing rice wine. We're gonna go in with some sesame oil. All right, guys? Same with sesame oil, making sure that you check the label. And by label, at the back of every uh, bottle, it always has to tell you by law what's the uh, percentage of um, ingredients in there. So just because, don't trust the labeling, like because it says uh, pure sesame oil, sometimes they actually do a blend. So you might find that it's only 70% sesame oil and about 30% of something else, like soya bean oil. Just make sure that you're picking one that's 100%. Uh, yours is probably my favorite. Okay guys? Uh, we're gonna go in with some white pepper. White pepper and pork is like a happy marriage. Okay guys, so if you're ever working with pork, uh, for an Asian recipe, add some white pepper. Same with like soups, I love adding a bit of white pepper. And then we're gonna add a little bit of corn flour, okay guys? And a little bit of bicarb. Now the purpose of those two things is a process, something called velveting. Just a pinch there, okay? So the bicarb and the corn flour together act as binding agents, but it also velvets the meat. What that means is that it just, you know when you bite into a dumpling and it has that lovely kind of um, chewiness to it, you know, and that moorish kind of texture, that comes from the corn flour and also the bicarb. It transforms the meat and it puffs it up. So definitely add a little bit of those two. All right, so now that our meat's marinating in it, uh, something my dad taught me a long time ago was that you can always tell if your food is going to be flavoursome and if it's seasoned well enough is if you smell it and you can smell all the different ingredients. So I'm really happy with that. It's, I can just smell everything. I can smell the wine, the soy sauce, uh, the sesame oil and the pepper. So I'm going to add my last ingredients, which is... Jenny, yeah. someone was asking on Instagram, uh, the brands of sauces, where can you find them? They're all at Chinese grocers. I found them all there. Yeah, great question. So yes, you'll need to track down uh, your local grocery store. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if everyone's from Perth here, uh, but trust me, there's, okay, cool, all around Australia. Um, I used to live in Sydney, so Canley Heights, Cabramatta, it's literally like mini Vietnam. And New Zealand. Yeah, <laughs> um, but you'll you actually be surprised. They're actually easier to track down than you think if you know where you're going. So um, your local Asian grocery store, definitely. And I find even these days, are like online, like if you know what it looks like or what the brand is, just type it on Google and someone will stock it, yeah? 
Um, okay, so we're gonna grate in our ginger. This is a microplane. I think it's called something else as well. I saw a, a rash grater, rasp grater. But basically you wanna use this because uh, ginger has a lot of fibers in it. So uh, I wouldn't chop it. Um, you just end up with kind of massive chunks that don't actually spread the flavor throughout the, the pork mixture. By using your microplane, what will happen is that you'll see it, it actually bruises the ginger creating juice. So then you're actually getting some really nice uh, liquid go into that, that, um, that mixture as well. Now, if you're uncomfortable using this, guys, I definitely would not get the kids doing this. It's really sharp and these um, cuts are probably the worst. So um, they always have like little tools that help you um, sit it on top of the bowl nicely so that way it doesn't move. When you're getting a bit close to your fingers, uh, too close for comfort, what you want to do is you grab a fork and you're going to stab it. Sorry, there's no other prettier word. <laughs> okay, you're going to stab your ginger and then you're going to keep going. Can you see all that, guys? And you just tap it into the bowl and then all the liquids will fall down with it as well. I find this way you're catching all the big fibres and breaking them up so you don't get any nasty chunks as well. Um, there's a lot of different herbs that you can add to this as well, guys, like coriander is another great one. Spring onions. So, uh, Jenny, shout out to Bun Me. Someone's asking your restaurant far away. Oh, so Bun Me is in Leaderville. Um, it's actually doing really well. Like, I'm, I just, I'm so proud of the team and everything that we've created over the last kind of year and a half that we've been open. Uh, we do Vietnamese street food, so we specialize in uh, Bun Me's, which is the baguette rolls. Uh, but we do a lot of other dishes as well, like um, I think the uh, beef noodle salad, the bumbo sao. And also our fowl, the beef fowl, has got to be favourites there. Spring rolls, the lacy spring oh rolls. yes, the lace yeah, vegan spring rolls. We've got a lot of vegetarian and vegan options there as well. So if you haven't been down there, shame on you. Uh, but no, definitely come down and visit. Uh, we're, we're still open seven days a week and it's just shorter trading hours. So 11 till 2. Uh, feel free to check us out on Instagram. It's just bun me, uh, bun dot me, Or you can check my Instagram out and you can find uh, all the photos and links on there as well. Okay. Sorry for the noise. We're finished with our ginger. Can you guys see that bowl? It was good, didn't it? Okay, I'm just gonna do a bit of clean up. Um, with the dough, someone's asking, can you make it the day ahead and can you freeze it? Um, the answer to those two questions is, you can make the dough the day before if you are making the whole dumpling the day before and then you can freeze it. Um, but you can't just make the dough and then freeze it aside and reuse it because when you freeze it, what happens is uh, you're, you're ultimately adding water content. So when you defrost it, what will happen is that it goes really soggy um, and it's not a nice texture. So uh, dough is uh, to be made and used fresh on the day, guys. But you can definitely make all your wrappers and make the dumpling itself and freeze that. So I do that very often at home. Great question. <laughs> all right. So you, you might, guys might notice I'm using a fork, okay? I'm not mad. Uh, there's actually a reason for that. I find that uh, the fork, when it comes to bringing together your filling, makes it really easy to mix things evenly, uh, but also to squish all the ingredients in. And we're going to do a technique called spinning. <laughs> uh, I think I, uh, I don't think anybody taught me this. I think I just realised that it works a lot better for you, okay? And I actually start to spin my mix as if it was like in a washing machine you guys can see that and you can see how fast the texture actually changes and you just don't get that with a spoon um, you just get it with a fork to be honest you can see how can you guys see the clumps of fat that um, I got the butcher to put in there right what you want to achieve as you spin it is you don't want to see any more balls or mints you just want to see a really nice kind of solid uh, taffy mix when it all looks like it's one mass and all the fat has been mixed in and it looks stringy, you know you're there. So we're almost there, guys. And it also, it's a sign for you that once it becomes one big mass, it means that all your starches have actually mixed together and done its work. Okay. All right, guys, our filling's good to go. I want to chuck in my bok choy now at the last minute. 
I don't like to ch chuck it in too early because it are bruises when you're mixing. So very last minute. Completely optional, guys. Up to you. If you like it, put it in. If you don't and you're a, a meat lover, you can omit it. I made um, some vegan dumplings actually for the first time the other day. Well, I've, I've made lots of vegetarian ones before. Um, I think you guys have had a chance to taste them, but I've improved it since. So I'm really loving it. My sister's gone vegetarian, so it's a big uh, request in the family these days. So I use mushrooms, Chinese cabbage, carrot. It's beautiful. All right, filling all done, guys. And I believe Joe's just told me that we're halfway. Uh, so you can see there that, guys, in half an hour, we've done our dough. We've done our filling. Uh, now we're gonna actually start to make the dumplings and the dressing you can put together in less than five minutes. So we're perfectly on track, which is nice. Okay, coming back to our dough. Is there anything else you like to do vegetarian ones? Uh, my favorite filling is the um, shiitake mushrooms, uh, oyster mushrooms, because they have a beautiful uh, amount of liquid to it as well. So you get really nice juiciness when you bite into it. Yet Chinese cabbage has been a new addition. Um, other than carrot, I also love water chestnuts and corn and baby corn if you can get your hands on it. So it adds a nice sweetness and crunch. Okay, so just using a small knife, guys. Now I'm going to be doing these by hand. So if you have a pasta machine or the um, a pasta attachment on the KitchenAid, this is the time to use it. But otherwise, honestly, I don't feel like it's that long to actually do. So cut your dough down, guys, into more manageable sizes um, based on your workbench and also your muscles. <laughs> The bigger the, the piece of dough that you're working with, the harder it is to roll out and to do it evenly. So I generally do it in, in thirds. Like that's a good size. Okay, so we're gonna flatten it out like a flatbread on the bench. Make sure you dust everything that you work with when it comes to dough. Otherwise it will stick, okay? Now there's actually a, an effective way to roll out dough as well. You always want to start in the middle, okay, and use your palms. So, or you can hold the handles, up to you, but I find it hits the bench. Um, I like using my palms on the roll itself, and I find our French rolling pins are fantastic if you can get your hands on them as well. Uh, basically, it's just the wood section all the way along. Okay, so in the middle, guys, and just what you want to do is you want to roll um, outwards, so start at the middle and roll north, east, west and south and I just keep flipping flip and flower is the key to winning okay. All right. is there any other questions that have come up Joe? the recipe's on the blog if anyone's looking for it um, microphone's here. The recipe's on the blog if anyone's looking for it. The Kitchen Warehouse blog. So thanks for tuning in today guys for the dumplings. Um, I'm really excited to be doing all this work with Kitchen Warehouse uh, and I'm really excited to announce that we'll be doing a Vietnamese recipe soon as well. So tune in for that one. It's actually one of my favourite recipes. It's actually the uh, uh, savoury crepe. So it's called bun sale. But it uses uh, turmeric, coconut milk, rice flour. It's gluten free for everyone who's a celiac or like me, gluten intolerant. So that's a lovely recipe. Very fresh and great for entertaining as well. Um, Eugene's saying that when she rolls her uh, dough on the bench, it sticks a bit much. Is that because she's not lifting it up? Oh, like, um, it at home? Yes. More flour. And also, um, depends what bench you're working on. So, um, if you, wood is the worst to work with, if, if you've got a, a bench at home, I, it's generally because it's not sealed, um, but yeah, if, if it's sticking, it just means the dough's too wet. So just a bit of extra flour on the surface, be really generous and you'll be fine. So we're almost there, guys. Um, a common question that's asked um, in a lot of these classes is how thick or thin should you roll out your dough? I think one millimetre to two millimetres is good, guys. If you like a bit of a moorish texture and for it to be more filling than two millimetres. If you like it more silky and sophisticated, about one millimetre. Uh, but keep in mind, the thinner you roll it, the harder it will be to pleat. So we're 
almost there, guys, with this one. It definitely is a good workout. The dough feels beautiful, though. It's really nice and silky and soft. That's got a, a good pull to it, too. The flour in between as well helps to set the dough, the pastry. That way it doesn't shrink when you're rolling. minutes yeah. uh, from memory it depends how much you put in there if you're doing uh, this exact recipe five minutes and you're done um, but if you like doubling or tripling it'll take longer all right guys I'm really happy with that now feels beautiful wish you could feel it <laughs> it feels so nice it's a weird thing but I feel like when you feel it and it feels nice you know it's gonna taste nice um, okay so I'm happy with that we're gonna get our ring cutter guys um, if you're a beginner at dumplings, I would recommend going bigger than smaller. So eight centimeters is probably perfect. Uh, but if you're doing it with the kids, uh, even a 10 centimeter one, that way they can put a bit more filling in there. Um, they've got room for all their fingers to pleat. That's always good, okay? So start at the edge, guys. Okay, press your ring cutter down and then just twist with your hands. The twisting just ensures that you get a really nice clean wrapper, okay? So what you want to do is actually just cut them all out. Now obviously try to maximise your space to get as many as you can. Okay. Now obviously no one's here to t uh, taste these today guys. Normally I'd make a whole batch, but I'll just make enough for you guys to actually see and taste it. Okay, so there's my wrappers guys. So you can see they're pretty thin <laughs> um, and you can generally see through them but um, they feel beautiful okay all right so now I've got my wrappers I'm gonna go ahead and put filling in them get a little teaspoon or a spoon if uh, if you can't find a teaspoon guys or a tea, uh, you can actually use the back of the spoon so you generally want to put on about a teaspoon Let me this closer to me. right in the center you guys see that so, once again, it depends on the size of your wrapper, but maybe a better way to actually do it is you want about a thumb. So if you guys look at that, about maybe a thumb, two centimeters, or at least one all the way around, okay? The more of a beginner you are, put less filling in there, you've just got a bit more room to work with, all right? So I'm gonna show you guys two types of folds. Uh, once you seal it, it doesn't matter, like it's all edible, but uh, one's a bit more fancy. Um, and then the other one's a bit more simple. Okay, so I'm just gonna get some glue. Give me a sec. Glue being AKA water, all right? So this is what's gonna seal our dumpling together. Um, just one thing too, I know Jenny's very good at this and it's actually easier than it looks to do, but there is also for kids and things, there's these kind of maker type ones that you make the dough or buy the dough and then you flip them together. So um, they sell those here. Very handy, those. All right, guys, so all I've done is what you want to do is using your water, pick a finger and you want to add water to half the edge, okay? So if you imagine like it's a full circle, like a full moon, we're going to paint half the moon, okay? And then all I do is using my fingers, I just pinch them together, okay? Start in the middle and finish one side and then do the other side. That way you've got no air bubbles. So that's your sealed dumpling. You can see there guys that there's no air bubbles, nice and tight there. The filling is really nicely filled. All right, and then, so this fold is called a boat fold. Uh, it's also called a tortellini fold. If, um, if you make pasta at home, okay? So all I do is once I've sealed it together, okay, where my fingers are, I'm gonna put a bit of glue on this side, and then I just bring them together and clip it. Can you guys see that? And you know that your dumpling is perfectly filled when you've got like this little double chin like peach bum looking thing going on, okay? All right, so that's that fold. I'll do it again. I talk very fast, so I'll try to slow down on this one for you guys. 
Okay, so it's not, yeah. All right, so filling in the middle, water on half the edge. Okay. Then we're going to seal them. Okay. Pinch it in the middle and then pinch it all the way around. When you're here, once again, add a bit of water and you're going to fold them together. Okay. Okay. So one more time, guys. Filling in the middle. Water on half the wrapper. Okay. Bring it together and pinch. Okay. Same as the other side. Okay. Turn it upside down. Bit of water. Fold it together. There you have. Okay. All right. So that's called the boat fold, and this one's great because it catches the maximum amount of sauce. Okay. But this is my favourite type of wrapper. Okay. This is my uh, my pride and joy. So this is a pot sticker fold. Okay. So same thing. Filling in the middle. You're gonna add water to half the semicircle once again. Then you're going to hold it like a taco. You can imagine a soft taco. That's how you're going to hold it. For this fold, you're going to use your thumb and your forefinger. Okay? And the action that you're doing is you're going to pinch, fold, pinch, fold, and you keep repeating until you seal it all the way. Okay? So, is that a good angle for you guys? Can you see? Okay, so I'm pinching it. I'm folding it. I'm pinching it. I'm folding it. Moving my finger, pinch, fold, pinch, fold, pinch, fold, pinch, fold, and at the very end, same thing. And there you have a cute little pot sticker. These are great for pan frying because you get a really good surface area. Can you guys see them there on the bench? Yeah. So, we'll do that one again, guys. Can I get a time check, Joe? Yeah, for about 10 minutes. Okay, cool. great. So, we're going to cook these up, guys. So, if you're doing these at home, hopefully someone helping you. <laughs> but technology definitely makes everything a lot quicker. And there's nothing wrong with buying store-bought wrappers. Um, they're actually quite good. They're not as good as homemade ones, but it's kind of like instant pasta, right? If you're short on time, it's fine. If you're making your own wrappers, it will only last uh, one day, guys. One to two days max in the fridge. Um, it goes a, a funny grey colour. So the filling, nothing happens to it, but the dough itself um, changes colour. And also, um, if you leave it for any longer than a day or two, depending on your fridge, if there's too much moisture, your dough will start sticking and it'll just rip when you try to cook with it. Um, so, yeah, if you're, if you're making it in the fridge one to two days, you, you really should cook it. Or the best thing to do is just freeze them. If you freeze them, it can be in there for a month, two months, and it's fine. Sorry, guys, I forgot to walk you through what I'm doing. So remember, pinch, fold, pinch, fold. And the great thing about fresh dough is that it's very forgiving. So you can stretch your own dough to give you a bit more space. But, um, so cute. Okay. Now, um, we've got about 10 minutes left, guys, so I'm not going to uh, make more dumplings. But by all means, once you get your system going, your wrappers are ready, your filling's ready, it's a really quick process. And obviously, if you're, the whole family is joining in, you'll be able to fold probably 30, 40 dumplings in about 20 minutes. It's pretty quick.
So I've got some water over here. Can you guys see this? Maybe move some of this out of yeah, the way sure. so then you can see. Whilst the camera's adjusting, guys, I want to actually put together a quick dipping sauce as well in another bowl. Yep, Thank you. I'll use a clear one, actually. Oh, when you making a small amount? Yep. Because um, we're, we're, it's a one-serve portion of dumplings, guys, I'm just going to make the dipping sauce in a clear bowl just so you can see for ratios. Can you guys see that if I put it here? Okay. To make your dipping sauce, guys, all you need is... Oh, well, I suppose the recipe is there anyway. But it's just soy sauce, which gives you savouriness. Oop. You're going to put in black vinegar. A very similar amount. Now, black vinegar in Asian cooking is like the balsamic vinegar for um, Italian food. It's, um, it's, it's stunning. It's got a really nice acidity. It just makes, it cuts through all that fattiness and um, it just adds another level of flavor. So definitely invest in one of these bottles. Uh, it goes great with salads as well. So if you're making like an Asian salad um, and, and you want to give it a bit of a zing, okay, or you don't have any uh, lemon, uh, black vinegar is fantastic. I just need a touch of sugar. The sugar just helps to balance out the saltiness and the, um, the acidity. Just mellows it out. That's all you need. And I love chili oil. Dumpling without chili oils is missing something. So this is a great brand as well. So this is actually, oh, it's all in Chinese, unfortunately. Uh, but it's a, a spicy, crispy chili oil. So um, they've actually added some peanuts and fried the, the chili flakes, but it's really nice. You can definitely make your own as well for another time. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of chili oil to this. It also get, gives it a really nice colour. How much you add is up to you. If you like it spicy, then add more. So in here, guys, we have a touch of sugar, soy sauce, black vinegar, and a bit of chili oil, okay? And you just want to mix it just enough for the sugar to dissolve. And even if you, it's not that dissolved, it doesn't matter because when you pour it over your hot dumplings, um, the heat will melt it anyway. Okay? I'm going to give that a quick taste. Mmm, that is yum. That is perfect. Okay, so dressing's ready to go. It took less than a minute. Okay, guys? I've got some boiling water here. Uh, with anything, if you're boiling it, just make sure you salt it. If they're frozen dumplings, guys, um, six minutes. But these are fresh and the meat's already uh, been left out, so four minutes is plenty. I'm going to pop these in. Okay. If, it, if it's lost its boil, just put the lid back on but you want to take the lid off the minute it comes back to boil. I'm going to get myself a slotted spoon ready to go and a plate. Whilst we're waiting for that guys, I'm just going to cut some garnish, a bit of spring onion, optional. dumplings you probably need about a litre yeah just imagine you're boiling pasta guys as long as there's enough water to cover all your dumplings yeah and are you going to tell us that secret for how you do fried ones quickly at the same time oh the pot chicken yeah sure i'll just finish cutting these guys so the question was how do you make pot stickers so pan fried dumplings the only difference is you would use the exact uh, style of pan so you um, you want something that's non-stick with a lid okay you would put a little bit of vegetable oil on the bottom a very thin amount maybe like a tablespoon you place your dumplings in the middle cold and you turn the pan on to hot okay 
Um, you want it on about a medium heat. And then from there, once the bottoms, I lift up my dumplings to check when they're brown. And when they're brown, I just pour in boiling hot water, just from the kettle, just enough to steam them for four minutes. And then you take the lid off and you just wait till all the water's evaporated um, and you have pot stickers. I know you've got a few different ways you do this. The basket, the, yeah. yeah. If you're using the basket, guys, you just need uh, some sort of cloth um, as insurance or baking paper underneath your um, your steamer, and you just place the dumplings on top, and then pop the lid on once again, uh, boiling hot water, and let it steam for about four minutes, and you're done. Okay, four to six. Um, baking paper only works so if you've got the one with the um, the holes in it, so you can buy that at the Asian grocery stores. Otherwise, uh, you can just use, yeah, I think chucks is probably best. Okay, I'm going to take the lid off, guys. All right, so move them around gently. If they have, um, some of the water's evaporated, so if they have stuck to the bottom, just give them a little bit of a gentle nudge and it'll come straight off. Don't scrape it because it will get stuck. Almost done, guys. Are you guys excited to taste them? Yes. <laughs> Always. I feel like I've lost a bit of, a little, a little bit of heat. We're almost there, guys. Put another minute. I might put the lid back on. Wait. So I've just chopped some spring onions there, guys on a diagonal, some slithers, it's probably the proper way, spring onion. favorite meal and once you start making them you literally can eat them like every day That's how I feel anyway. all right we're gonna fish these out now so you can see there guys and you'll know they're also ready because the the wrapper kind of hugs in the filling and you get a really nice shine on the dumplings okay so strain the water and the best time to dress your dumplings is the minute they come out okay of the pot and the reason for that is they're really hot uh, they're steaming so they can absorb the dressing still so if you do it straight away the sauce will absorb the best okay so there's my dumplings guys get a spoon mix up your sauce dress them very generously I always like to leave some extra for guests as well so they can dip and then Lucky last, garnish with some spring onions. And there you have it. Some pork ginger dumplings. Awesome. Someone yes. was asking if it was um, polite to serve them with, um, like how you serve them traditionally. Is that Chinese, that how you serve them? Yeah, with? yeah. Yes. So, Asian cuisine uh, in general is always about sharing. So normally we'd have a mountain of dumplings and everyone would just have their own small bowl and some dipping sauce and um, you would kind of just eat from the, the main plate. And how many can you cook at a time? Uh, depends on the size of your pot, but um, comfortably I'd say 15 to 20 yeah, if it's a large enough pot. I would normally use, actually use a saucepan if you guys are doing a, a lot of dumplings because you can hold more water and just make sure it's boiling the whole time. Great. You guys ready to taste? Yeah, I'll just see if there's any more questions. If anyone wants to send some questions through, and um, we've answered quite a few. People have been sending them along the way. I wanna, so, I wanna. They look great, yummy. Um, everyone's pretty excited to try them. I wanna cut one open. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but just so you can see the amount of filling as well. I'm gonna steal this one. I haven't had the punch. All right, guys. So get some filling, some spring onion. 
So thank you to Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. And, uh, and thank you for joining in again. And any questions that don't get answered now will be answered later on. So thanks. See you later.